I'm going to be covering the questions I use and what I ask and what I'm looking for when I'm interviewing a apprentice or an entry level technician and kind of the critical things that really mean the most to me as somebody hiring in this industry. What I'm going to be coming at you with is what is saturation and what I'm really looking for is your ability to articulate the concept and explain it to me and how well you actually understand that fundamental. I wouldn't expect you to be an expert at it and I, most of the time I don't even expect a, you know, an accurate answer if I'm being honest. As long as you can formulate you know, the basic concept to me, depending on the role you're trying to go for, I'm, I'm just looking to see your ability to answer it. Now, as an apprentice, you could be totally wrong, but if you gave a really strong effort into giving that, and that's really helpful to me to see kind of what your personality is like. As a more entry level technician, uh, I'm really gonna expect you to be able to actually give a legible answer that makes sense, even though it may not be perfect, it's close enough to the truth. I wanna know your ability to articulate superheat and subcool. It's testing your ability to understand this trade and the fundamentals of it and try to communicate it, but at the same time, it's also gonna help me start to build what real practical experience you have. You know, is it truly just school level? Is it, you know, maybe you've, you say you've got a few years in the trade and I really want to know just how well you're able to actually apply those things, you know, just, and, and I want you to tell me how they're used and why they're used a certain way. It helps me build a, a confidence level pro, for you as, as a profile and understanding just how confident are you really with the subject matter and the material and have you learned a lot of bad practices? You know, have you been taught a lot of things you probably shouldn't have been taught and am I gonna have to somehow train those things back out of your process and your systems and what you think is right and wrong? Why did you choose HVAC? Like what was the draw behind it out of all the career choices? Could have been a mechanic, plumber, electrician, what was HVAC to you that made you want to take that path and go that route? And that really helps me find, you know, where your passions are and what, what is driving you. And that also usually leads into kind of a goal scenario of what is your career goals? What are you hoping to achieve? And just exactly what do you want from your career? It's all kind of bundled into one. So what tools do you have? I'm really wanting to see, okay, what investment have you already made in this industry? And, and that's going to kind of play into just how serious you are. Your ability to tell me what tools you have or what tools you want to have or what you think you need helps me guide what training you've had mixed with how much you know about the tools themselves and what their purposes are, what they're used for. Those are my main questions I'm looking for when I sit down with an entry level technician or an apprentice and I really want to know how well you answer those questions and me building the profile I need to offer that to decide are you truly a good fit for our team and are you going to really strive to achieve your goals that you've set out for yourself. A lot of companies are really just interested in a warm body nowadays and that's okay. We got a tech shortage. A company like mine and my team I do still work very selectively on who I choose. I don't take just everybody. These questions are really derived from the same questions I've gotten from people I look to as mentors or have helped, who have helped me come a long way. I have sat in interviews where ultimately they just wanted to see my resume, they saw what I said I did, and they just wanted to make sure that I was okay with whatever they decided to pay. So not every interview is gonna go this way, but in my opinion, one that's really gonna be a heavy interest to you, that's gonna help you push forward in your career, these are the types of questions you also want to see from that company. If you do end up in a position to where the best offer you can get is say like an install role or something of that nature, that's okay. When you get in those roles, really make sure you stay focused on what you're trying to achieve. And so when you're pulling vacuums, when you're brazing, when you're pressure testing and all these things, all, those, all of those principles get used inside of a service tech's role on day to day. So really work on your practices and perfecting those. And a lot of installers really just end up getting hung up on, well, how fast can I do this? Because a lot of times they get paid by the job. Don't let yourself fall into that. Yeah, you might make a little more money in that moment, but if you take the extra time to stay focused and really work on growing your practices and getting better so that whenever you do try to go for a service role, you can transfer those skills over and you've got a much more solid foundation. If you're interested in a more senior level type interview questions for a tech two, tech three, or even higher, let me know. I'm kind of curious to see, see what you think about this video, if it helps you at all. 
Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this one and I'll see y'all around.